Hello and welcome to another episode of the TF Cast. Today is October 13th, 2021. Today with us, we have painter Justin Eck. He's here to talk with us about the upcoming Day of the Dead celebration in Lower North. Um, not Lower North, I'm sorry. Uh, Old Town, Mankato, correct? Correct. And um, just some of your artistic ventures. There's been a whole lot popping around town. Um, there's just a lot of your work everywhere. So uh, let's start off with the Day of the Dead stuff. Will you tell us what's going on with the event? Sure. Um, so we set out to make... Uh, uh, small arts grant program kind of oriented smaller festival uh, which started in our parking lot a couple years ago and uh, Brenda from the Prairie Lakes Regional Art Council reached out and said you know I've been involved with these kinds of events and I think some funding would help you guys you know take it a little bit further so I pursued that grant and it just has kind of uh, it, you know escalated elevated or evolved kind of into a streetwide thing so, with support from the old town groups and businesses so what's that going to look like are are you um gathering artists or musicians or just so partiers? there's some traditional um performers there'll be a mariachi band um and then like a folklorico dancers and azteca dancers um, okay. two different Aztec dancing troops. So there'll be a lot of traditional art. Today I got a confirmation of a group of 10 lowriders that'll be coming. So we have a little bit of a car show there as well. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that'll be fun. A lot of people organizing many things that I can't keep track of anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it'll be quite the event. Um, did we get the date out? I, saw, I don't know. If I... So that'll be October 30th, uh, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's in two weeks from now. Okay. Cool. And you, you said this started in the parking lot of your business. Mm -hmm. um, did, did, it, did it start as a previous event or is that just how you started planning this one? So... We started becoming involved with some of the Old Town events, and it was under a larger event, which is the Old Town trick-or-treating, and we just decided that we would do a Day of the Dead in our parking lot, and it just kind of, it was a good hit for everybody, and everybody in the group decided that it, it's a much more culturally impactful thing to have everybody invest their time into making that happen. Mm-hmm. And it, with you said that there's some involvement um, with the 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 grant corporate. Like, what are, what are they doing um, to help out? Is that like how how has this been organized in general? So our old town association formed a committee. Um, a lot of the the work and in, in, uh, organization and connections and community packs and bonds have been made through Bellissimo. That's kind of the primary founder that has been doing. Uh, a lot of that kind of work, but we do have a committee to oversee and make sure everything kind of goes smooth and everybody's doing what they need to do. Okay. Um, so what, uh, oh, the, the events that were there before, like previous iterations, what's that looked like at all? So that's typically just families coming down and doing store to store trick or treating. It's a family oh, oriented okay. event. So but it, I mean, it has a big draw for families and kind of the target market for the businesses down there. So okay. hoping to more attract um, a Spanish speaking and Latino community to come and kind of vitalize and patronize the businesses down there. So for, for someone to uh, uh, Dia de los Muertos or uh, Day of the Dead, um, what, what does that mean for, for folks in the Latin community? And how is it a little bit different from Halloween or how do they? Yeah, so... Uh, one important thing we're going to have at our event is a Mayan shaman who will explain the difference between the two activities. But briefly, Halloween is, uh, I don't want to say it this way, a uh, pagan holiday, frankly. Um, it's trick-or-treating typically, you know, uh, whereas Day of the Dead is a remembrance and celebration of life for those lost. Mm -hmm. So there's altars that are created um, to memorialize these people with things that they loved in life, different food items, you know, alcohol, if that was part of their life. Uh, mm -hmm. Pictures are an important part, and uh, it's just a celebration for this. So it's the typical celebration lasts three days. Uh, w the first two days are days of celebration. They're joyous days. You remember, I believe the first day is for children, and the second day is for, I can't recall, but the third day is more of a morning day, and that's kind of typically what you see in those settings. Um, but this is kind of a, um, modified to fit our community and modified to 
coincide with other celebrations that are happening at the same time. Okay. How, how did these, how did these two things become equated in like a uh, American society? Like they don't seem to be very similar at all, actually. You know, I think it's just, they kind of take some of the iconography, like the skeletons and stuff like mm -hmm. that and apply it to that. And it's, it's, it's cute. And it's, you know, so people just kind of adopt those kinds of things, I think. But, mm -hmm. um, I think, a lot of the Latino community is okay with that, but we also want to educate and make sure that people are properly enjoying those things, you know? So certainly, yeah. As you, I mean, Cinco de Mayo is not exactly something that I would want to like say is like a, the way, the way you celebrate that is kind of like really gross in America, I think. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't want that kind of same overlap there. Um, what for the, the people who show up who like, aren't members of that community like you know if, it, if it's you know your your average halloween goer what should they expect like how how can they feel um you know like they, they probably want to be respectful and you know come in there with the reverence that it deserves you know like what what should they expect um is it going to be like educational stuff or just to like come yeah in? so there'll be some educational elements uh that shaman will kind of give different um presentations i would say he's emceeing the kind of event so he'll um, I, I hope for what, you know, the cost of that was, there'll be some pretty good education bits in there. <laughs> um, so, uh, that'll be the primary education will be direct contact, but also immersion in our culture, the dancing, the, the, the celebration of it. Actually, we don't want people to be afraid or scared or see it as a holiday that people, uh, live with fear in any sort of way, because it's, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a celebratory thing and, that's what we want people to take. It's not going to be something that they read because I don't think that people do that. I think they're going to see that it's a celebration and seeing our culture celebrating this, you know, people will hopefully be infected by that. Is what, to what extent is the, uh, the celebration, um, kind of like showing kids and younger people or people ch like who might be afraid of death, like getting them a little bit comfortable with it or familiarizing them with that. Do you, do you see any of that happening? Oh in yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, death is a hard conversation to have. I mean, I'm a parent and it's hard. It's, I mean, it's hard to even explain what death means to somebody that they won't come back. Mm. Um, and day of the dead is kind of saying they might come back in this setting and it is, there's a time and place to celebrate life and death, mm. you know? So, um, we honor those lost loved ones with altars and they are part of that experience. They think about what was that person's life about and they assemble these things. It's, it's a practice. Mm. That seems, that seems like it could, could have a really positive impact on, on uh, yeah. especially younger folks as they're kind of learning about some of those things, because I mean, the not to bring it back to like Halloween, but it kind of lacks depth. Like you learn what good candy's like or something and how mm -hmm. to knock on your neighbor's door. So I think that it lacks some of the depth that maybe like a, a, a more uh, family oriented, like celebration of, of like a, the th something that we all go through in one way or another. I, um, I think a lot of it for me for too that. is, is um, not trying to gatekeep our culture from anybody or make anybody I want to help people understand. I want to bring people to our conversations in an inviting, welcoming place so that they can learn. And mm. I have very high hopes for people. And I have uh, a lot of trust and faith that people will want to learn and want to be educated and not ignorant about things that they don't understand. Mm. And that takes welcoming people, I think. Yeah, certainly. And that's not something that we... Like, I mean, Americans are all different kinds of people, but you'd like take like regular, like the mainstream status quo American culture. Like we just avoid death. Um, so I think, I think it's just a really cool thing in general to like bring in, um, and talk about more publicly, especially if it, it's, uh, on the diversity front, because these people are here already, you mm -hmm. know, like we, we have like large Latin communities all over Minnesota and Minnesota. So like having these large events for them it just makes our community better. It's just more things going on in old town Mankato, which is, I don't know. I'm, it's one of my favorite places to be in Mankato. I mean, I'm super biased cause I like spend a lot of time down there anyways. <laughs> one thing I really felt was an important goal of this event was to make an economic impact. We have, you know, rightfully so labor shortages and stuff like that. And I want to start, um, 
welcoming the idea that this Latin community is here to stay and they are going to close the labor gap for us. And in order to do that, they need to feel welcomed and invited to live and invest in our community. Mm. So that's one thing that I feel is important is putting on a show for people that we want to live here and invest in our community. Mm. In a sense, is that like a re a reaching out to those communities and being like your, your, the way that you practice this celebration is supported here and we're going to welcome you to this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think it's necessarily something in, that people intentionally do, but when you look yeah. at the programming of events that are available to us, it's a lot of things that are, uh, exclusive to white culture. And I don't mean to say it that way, but biking things and hockey things and things like that don't resonate with people of color because that's a lot of privileged things that we don't have access to or interest in because we haven't had those opportunities. Mm. So it's really looking at what interests are existing in diverse communities and providing those things, whether or not, you know, our community wants to do that, be step up and do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it, it's, it is really interesting to bring it around to economic impact too, because that, that kind of is for events just where the rubber hits the road. Like the event will not continue to happen unless the businesses surrounding it see some money, unless someone's just paying for it out mm -hmm. of their pocket. And I mean, like we're all here together. So like it, I don't know, like it, sometimes I feel like in, in some of these ideas when people are like, oh, we're going to do something for diversity. It's like a diversity perk instead of like just the reality that we're all here together. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know, I feel like that's like more of a permanent installation. I'm really glad to see it there. I mean, especially in old town. And I think that's a lot of what there, there has to be cooperation with Halloween. And I know some people will, that maybe be uh, controversial to say, cause they're not the same thing. And there is a distinction and there will be a distinction in our event, mm -hmm. but these are two blended societies that can exist together beautifully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I, that that's interesting that you, you'd say that because I feel like, you know, there, there's definitely like the sort of white person who will attempt to reduce things to it's like, like, Oh, they're trying to change it for us. And like that, I don't think that in most cases that's ever the case, really. They're just like, we want, you know, we want to add more context to mm -hmm. things so that they get better for everyone. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I, I'd be interested if you're willing to share like what, why that would be controversial for people who are in the in-group. Can you restate the question kind of? Uh, you said like some people might not like those things to be like, what, like what would the criticisms be? from the people who are, you know, in the group? Uh, well, one, the criticisms might come from the, actually the Latin community. Yeah. That this is getting blended with something that it isn't. Mm -hmm. And also from the Halloween celebrating community that they don't want something that they perceive as evil to be associated with Halloween, even though they're confused to begin with about what that means. Have yeah. you heard Have you heard that from people that they I, like I was the told that we were was... appropriating Latin culture, you know, to some oh. degree, which... I don't care what that, you know, it was a white person telling me this, so it doesn't really yeah. mean very much to me as a Latin person planning this event, you know. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, but I do take everybody's opinion into consideration, and that's why, you know, we have to maintain the cultural separation and do things with respect. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I'm very excited to see that ha event happening as well, and it's, it's pretty cool that... Uh, Prairie Lakes was helpful in making that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I, ho I hope that it goes well and hope that a bunch of our audience shows up respectfully and supports the. Yeah. And we, uh, there'll be face painters and stuff like that. And, uh, as long as it's done respectfully, come and get your face painted, come and celebrate the day of the dead with us. We want you to. So yeah, that's cool. awesome. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's move on towards some art stuff. Cause, uh, although this event is exciting and cool, you also are very, um, I have kind of a wide ranging set of practices and, and all kinds of things. So um, what, what, I guess what's been keeping you busy with art recently? Like what kind of projects are you working on? It's been a pretty busy summer for mural work. So okay. I've been doing a lot of uh, just anything really a lot of like helping other artists do their murals in either preparation or clear coding it, you know, just providing a crew to help people get plow through things so they become possible hmm. which is a joy that's really i mean 
I don't want to look at all my own art sometimes, but something needs to happen at the same time. So mm -hmm. well, there's certainly a lot of it. Like you've made over the last couple of years, your work has been popping up all over town. How does that feel to look at your own? I mean, like, I feel like every time I go to an event, I see you there painting. It's been at least like four times. I'm pretty <laughs> in the, like I said, I get very dissociated. I become kind of a character when I'm painting. I just kind of shut off and that's just what I'm doing. Mm. I, I don't know. I enjoy it. It just kind of feels like what I'm supposed to be doing. I just like to paint all the time. So mm. when, when did you, Oh, I'm, did you have more to say? Mm. When did you kind of like make the turn? Because y you were a painter by, by trade, like um, just like more of what you would think of like commercial painting, I imagine. Mm. And then, it, and then you started making a lot of murals. Like what was the moment? You know, in the painting world, you're always kind of dabbling with artisanal craft. You're always, you're doing a lot of prep work. You're doing a lot of steps. You're doing a lot of meticulous things. So all the tools and, and, and skills and, are kind of building over time. Um, and then the creative work has always interested me. I've always been, you know, an, an artist, I would say. So I um, just kind of started putting the pieces together and it just kind of, I'd say maybe within the last five years is where I really just took a dive and just started doing really what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how did that change from the, what you were doing before? Um, well, I'm a pretty work-driven person, so um, that really hasn't changed much. Um, I feel that it has uh, really made me happy. It's really made me doing what I want to be doing unless, you know, I love my customers, but sometimes it is a bit monotonous and it's a little, it's a bit factory work to go into a new construction home that starts from the bottom and you have to redo all these very meticulous steps. And then it starts over again and you do that over and over and over again. And it just gets very, it's kind of soul crushing and sometimes. So, um, and that's kind of what I always thought I would be doing. You know, I just didn't grow up with a lot of opportunities and that's kind of not a lot of education. And so I just kind of, this creative seed just started to grow and it just continued to grow into a uh, confidence that I just didn't have before. So you just follow along with that. You just follow along with what's making you feel like you're blooming, I guess. Hmm. Was, it, was there something to you in throughout that process that was kind of like inspiring you or driving you forward? Because it seems like that, that, that energy might have came from somewhere or you felt that pull kind of? Uh, you know, I, I've experienced a lot of trauma in life and... Uh, I've always been an artistic person, really never like in the realm of public art. Uh, so it's something I've always used as a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, and so it really just got to a point where I just could not be contained anymore. And I just, it just exploded outward and I just mm -hmm. doing what I want to do uh, with opportunities, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it's really driven by a, a need to feel balanced and a need to feel uh, catharsis and to feel mentally well is really mm -hmm. a good drive for that. And I found a way to channel my chaos into something. So it, yeah. stability, I guess, is the answer to that is, question. For for anyone who might be a, a follower of your TikTok, is that what they'd see if they scrolled back a little ways on that? Is that a little bit of the channeling catharsis and Oh processing? yeah. I mean, the chaos, I, one thing I love, they feel like it's a perfect metaphor for my own life is I've had a very chaotic life and I've all, I've all really tried to, to carve and sculpt that chaos into something beautiful. Hmm. And so a lot of my art is a chaotic process that I carve and it's like found composition and it becomes hmm. something out of a lot of chaos. Hmm. Interesting. What, uh, for, for some of, what are some of the murals that people might recognize around town that you've uh, had your hands in recently or, or you worked on a while ago that have uh, uh, I just recently did like a bison um, by the train tracks uh, by oh. Vetterstone Amphitheater. I did something at the hub this summer. Um, and then last summer we did our building, which is like dream catchers. Um, and I've done some work yeah. at, 
city center um cultivate mankato outside they have some different things painted there okay a lot of do- indoor mural stuff as well huh. is there is there any place that has a really cool indoor mural that you just wouldn't expect unless you it's your office or some place you walk through <laughs> Like cultivate Mankato, but I mean, they obviously that's on the inside. It has a really cool thing that I've done there, Okay, which you might not expect, but I'm trying to think, I mean, it's hard when I, I, I do, and this is not any way to brag or anything like that. I just have, I, I paint a lot and we get a lot of customers specifically asking for that. So it's hard to recall every single job that I've done. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. I wasn't looking for the exhaustive okay. list. Just curious okay. about what kind of jumped back out at you. Sure. Cause it, I, I know that I've seen some myself and I could name i mean the one by bellissimo and um i think i've i've i'm sure i've seen some others too but um i I haven't heard of the um, bison one either sun moon yoga i did that one a few years ago oh Um, i did see that in there that one's maybe kind of surprising you wouldn't really expect that to be back there it's kind of huge piece yeah, that was really nice. But sadly, nobody really sees anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, I think Sun Moon moved out of there, mm-hmm. and I don't know what they're doing with it now. I think the YMCA owns that space now. Are they still doing yoga there, probably? Maybe? No clue. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the last I heard well, about it. I hope they're enjoying the mural. I hope they nice are, too. <laughs> I got to DJ in front of it one oh, time. It was nice. fun. <laughs> Pretty space for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so w- what kind of... What other art projects have you, uh, has been working for you recently in terms of like, um, kind of working through some of your processes or or getting, I really like to toe the line of comedy and art. I just, I really enjoy to take the seriousness out of things sometimes and just make some, some, some comedy in in situations, but also something substantial comes out of that, but also there's a lightness to it too, that I think needs to exist. Mm. Uh, so kind of like, uh, this like performance art thing that you might find on my TikTok is like, uh, yeah, it's pretty silly sometimes to be honest, but I enjoy it. I mean, I enjoy it. I enjoy just yeah. letting go and not feeling inhibited by what other people will think. That's a big thing. I think if you want to get better at your art, don't care about it and just put it out into the universe and who cares what anybody says about it. That's mm. the, the fastest way that you will grow your confidence as an artist, I think, is to just put mm. your work out there. Is that, that's like, um, what, I don't know if it's the emperor who has no pants or it's like the, the thought of going out wearing a goofy outfit and like letting people judge you so that you get used to the like, and cause you're like, I'm fine. I chose to wear this weird outfit. Right. I think a big, like, actually, it's funny that you say that because when I was like more an everyday house painter, I would yeah. be wearing clothes that are just splattered with paint. And I would go mm. into nice million dollar homes and businesses and there'd be the mall. They're just people seeing you dress like this all the time. Mm. You just stop caring about it. You just stop caring about what anything mm. really, you know, you just look like. I don't know. You just look like that all the time and you just get really used to it. <laughs> so, yeah. For anyone who might have seen the TikTok, I imagine there's a lot of washing paint out of your hair. Is that, what What was that? What was yeah. the hardest part of like making that your there's, artistic practice? You know, sometimes there's still paint in my hair, but I'm very used to that. <laughs> you know, I like, I'll go in at six in the morning and start priming a house and spray the ceilings. The, you sure. know, all, I'm just very used to being caked in paint. So, so it was a fun extension of that a it little is, bit. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of taking tools that I already have in the box and just expanding it into something else. Yeah. I mean, you got a, a good brush on the top of your head. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> That's, it's, it's very fun to see like someone trying stuff that's different or like you, you, when your instant reaction is like, you can't do that. Or like, I wouldn't do that. And Mm -hmm. then you're like, wow, that's so cool. Yeah. I don't like to be told no, Yeah, you know, that's awesome. Well, I I encourage anyone who is curious to check it out. So I'm not a huge fan of people locally. I feel like I really love the anonymity of being online. Okay, nobody local. No check one it look out. ever. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, I you can look. It. I don't care really, but <laughs> <laughs> your opinion of me might change a little bit. Uh, everybody needs a little bit of a, a playful digital space. Certainly. So 
amidst all all of these like different practices, um, there's been kind of like this theme of like mental health and mental health awareness. Um, how how do you how do you how do you weave that in and like why is it so important to you? Well, um, I've watched a lot of people not take control of their mental health, um, and it's sad. It is sad to see. It's sad to know that oh, only they can really do anything to help themselves. But you're responsible for your own what you're you are to the universe. You're responsible for that. It's no one else's fault but your own responsibility to handle what has what your issues are and. Uh, uh, like my wife is the biggest influence for the mental health, like, um, um, shoehorn, I guess is just kind of that kind of, uh, dovetailing together is my wife is a therapist. Um, and just as help, I don't know why she stuck with me for so long because I'm, I'm nuts. And she has really just really showed me there is a way to be better. Uh, there is a way to not live uh, and just give in to circumstances and just kind of, there's a way to reclaim your life and you can help others do that too. Hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Hmm. What, how does that come out in some of your work? Do you think? I mean, directly I will, you know, pass on along information that I know, like, you know, we'll talk about, uh, seasonal defect, affective disorder. We'll talk about dissociation, oh. just these themes like, this is what happens to me when I paint or like, Oh, that's a trauma response. It's just kind of like normalizing those things in conversation and making it less stigmatized to talk about, you know, just talk about it. Oh. So if you've been through the process of, uh, even just chatting with her, like learned a lot about what that is oh, yeah. and how that, how that. Yeah. Okay. Um, everybody should go out there and get some therapy. Mm. Everybody should, you know, whether they need it or not, you know, mm -hmm. address things, you know, mm. do you, do you find art to be like, we probably, it's probably a stupid question at this point. Do you I'll find art to be there, therapeutic? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, kind of, I guess. Okay. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't know where I would be without that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Mankato is a town with a lot of murals in it um, itself. We, I think some people even think of us like as a little bit of a mural city. I've heard um, that. Yeah. What, are there, is there anything around town or are there any muralists like on like the, the grander stage of the world that you um, uh, pull some inspiration from? What do you like? I try not to contrive my art really from anybody. Um, there's a definitely some artists that I admire. Some of them are uh, like cities based artists. There's a couple of uh, BIPOC female artists that I'm really eye and that I really want to work with. I think we need an, um, an Asian inspired art piece here. I think that's really important. And I'm, I've been trying to lure her here, but, um, you know, <laughs> there's some people I, I've met a lot of people on TikTok that I'm like, holy cow, there's a lot of talented people in the world, you know, that mm -hmm. I can't, the, the list would go on there. Um, but I, I like to look more locally. I like to look at who is in our area, what's realistic, what actually exists to me, you know, like, um, so really one of my big focuses is going to be recruiting people from the cities to come here and do some art for us. Cool. Yeah. Well, you know, that here's my soapbox. <laughs> That's one of our, we, like we, we always hear Triple Falls think about Mankato as a destination. Like people just sleep on what is an awesome community and like only getting better every day. So, um, like I, I don't know. We're, we're, we're here for the people from the cities. The road um, works both ways kind of situation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like really close. Like for some reason, like if you're driving to the cities, people think it takes five minutes, but if you're driving back, people are like, no, it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> It cannot be done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> have, have you, uh, how'd you find yourself in Mankato? Have you grown up here? Did you move here? We, I was born in Mankato. Okay. Um, we moved to Madison Lake for a while and went to school in Cleveland. Okay. And uh, then we moved back to Mankato and I've been here since. Okay. So most of my life I've lived in Mankato. Hmm. What, what, a, what do you think about Mankato and its relationship with murals? Is it... Or do we have enough? Do we need 10x or, or? I think more is more. 
Right. That's what I believe. Uh, I'd like to see more diversity. Like I said, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to see my own work everywhere, really. I just want to keep the flame going, mm -hmm. you know? And um, I don't care if, if that means like kind of putting new work where I have old work, that's okay too. I just want to keep the excitement going. I want to keep mm -hmm. momentum. And I think that takes active work to mm -hmm. do and accomplish. Maybe, uh, yeah, well, it's cool to hear that you're, you're thinking about bringing or using your, I'm, I'm sure the incoming request that you might have to kind of be like, Hey, uh, how about this other artist too? Mm -hmm. That seems like a, a neat way to share that a little bit. And yeah, I mean, I have a painting crew, so I can definitely empower a lot of people to do things they uh, wouldn't be able to do. People would plan you know, okay. one art project for their whole summer and that's all that they could accomplish and that's reasonable. Yeah. But with, you know, a full-fledged painting crew, a lot is possible for our city. Wow. And that's what I would really like people to understand To um, a lot can be accomplished with a team of people. Certainly. So the artist is more like drawing plans and like, you know, make, you're, you're helping them realize their vision with yeah. extra people. Yeah. Extra people is like the, the prep getting a, a, I mean, for an artist base coating an entire large scale commercial building is a, not an easy task mm -hmm. without a pumper, you know, a lot of things that they might not be prepared to do or cleaning it properly. So it lasts or sealing it properly. So it lasts. So mm -hmm. providing, um, backup. Yeah. That, I mean, I'm sure that there's a lot of things that one wouldn't even think about if, unless they'd encountered it before or had some experience working as a commercial painter. I'm sure you encountered a lot of those same frictions there. Yeah, That's interesting. Huh. Cool. Well, speaking of community, we actually fielded our first ever question from the audience. Ooh, so we're going to take it. <laughs> we're going to kick it back to Grum and uh, he's going to present the audience question. Take it away. Hey, Grum here, and I got a question for you. Uh, this comes from our friend Jeff, a.k.a. Mr. Baby Lungs, who's a fan and an artist himself. He said, uh, uh, what is, on average, more useful for you and your artistic inspiration? Would it be real-life events and experience, or do you just like to come at it with pure imagination? I think most would say both, but please explain your reasoning. And he also did a little heart. Hmm. Thank you for the question. I... I um I do a lot of art in reaction to uh, just general stress or if there's like a timer inside of me that's like you haven't made anything in a while and that timer is about to go off. So it's it's really it's some it's a hunger and a thirst that I have to quench. And uh, if I don't, I start to feel <laughs> kind of anxious and stressed. So a lot of it comes from resetting that timer um, and and I have to feel like I accomplished the art. I have, I have to feel like I, I did the, if I don't get where I wanted with it, it, it doesn't feel complete. It doesn't feel like I satiated that hunger. So it's really a um, intense desire to get something made, something created, something substantial that I feel uh, accomplished about. Hmm. And, and often inspired from an event or, or is it, do you feel like it's separate from that? Though? Um, and not necessarily in a transcribable way where it looks exactly like that event that happened. Sure. More like an expressive way that, you know what, this was not a great situation. This happened now. This is the result of that. Mm. But I'm going to find some balance in that and, and carve out something beautiful out of that. So it's, it's, it's taking like my rawest emotion and my rawest expression and coming at it with some gentleness and kindness and, and, and carving something nice out of it. Mm. So showing myself that you can make something out of that is a cathartic experience for me. Mm. Sounds a little bit transformational too, maybe like taking an energy and giving it new life or yeah. something. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's beautiful. Cool. Well, you want to plug the event one last time and wrap this up and get people connected with your work? Yeah. So, um, you can find us at the event, uh, the Day of the Dead, Dio de los Muertos event festival in Old Town, Mankato on October 30th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., 4 p.m. And where, where exactly in Old Town? So the boundaries for the street shutoff are from the wine cafe to mom and pop. So the whole entire street will be shut down within that boundary. Oh, awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. There'll be original art pieces that I've created 
uh, flags down the whole entire street, the vendors, there's about 50 vendors down the whole street. A lot of surprises things, honestly, it'll be pretty phenomenal. Wow. I've never seen, I've never seen them shut down the street like that before. So that's going to be really neat. It wasn't easy to convince them to do yeah, it. Yeah, I wouldn't know. imagine. It's taken us about two years. I've had to hire an engineer to get that to happen with a traffic reroute. It's been wow. kind of, uh, 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 it'll be a nice reward when it happens. Yeah. yeah, well, thank you for putting in all the effort to make it happen. I mean, it's going to be awesome to get to attend, and we're you know, proud to have it here in Mankato. Mm -hmm. Um and what if people want to find um, your like Insta or TikTok? Like, where do they go? Yeah, if you want to see me acting more normal, you can find me on Instagram. It's Justin dot or is it Justin M dot uh, That's on Instagram, and you can find me on TikTok at Moving One. But if you're local, don't just yeah. skip it. If you're local, if you know me personally, <laughs> that isn't me. <laughs> just come to the Day of the Dead, yeah. and you can also find me on OnlyFans. Uh, just you know, <laughs> that's, that's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> People will see your TikTok and they'll be like, I don't know. He might not have been joking. That's, that's how I'm making the money. <laughs> right on. Well, hey, thank you for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. This was great.